Hello everyone. It's the fourth Sunday of Easter. Let's continue to celebrate Easter by worshiping at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Stewart, Minnesota. Loving God, we thank you that your Son, Jesus, is the Good Shepherd who cares for your people. Open our hearts to hear his voice, to know him as he calls us by name, and to follow wherever he leads. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the fourth chapter of Acts, beginning at verse 5. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power? Or by what name 
did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Our second reading comes from John's first letter, the third chapter, beginning at verse 16. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, Let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them, and by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that is he has given us. Our gospel lesson, appointed for this Sunday, is found in the gospel according to John, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Here ends the gospel lesson. Grace and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. We're Jesus' sheep. That's what today's lesson means, that we're sheep belonging to the Good Shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep and who leads us to heaven. Of course, that's a metaphor, but it's an important metaphor that takes us a long way. Still, does that thought leave you cold? The thought that we're like sheep, sheep who belong to the Good Shepherd? Well, how would you like being referred to as a goat? There are quite a few other domesticated animals or wild animals that writers of the Bible might have used, 
donkeys, horses, cows, dogs, etc. It's surprising perhaps, but sheep are definitely the preferred metaphorical animal for humans in the Bible. On the wild side, there are lions and bears and leopards and deer and gazelles. The truth is, we are supposed to embrace the identity of being sheep of the Good Shepherd's flock. Anyway, let's begin by thinking about sheep and how people get compared to sheep in so many ways in the Bible. Of course, today's gospel lesson is the most important passage of all in the Bible in this regard. But let's not forget how important this overall theme is all through the Bible. On the other hand, it's probable that we modern people have hardly any experience with sheep. That's certainly true for me. So let's focus on sheep for a bit. It, isn't it noteworthy how important sheep were back in Jesus' day in Israel? Recall that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all herded sheep and goats. They were nomads who lived in tents, leading flocks of sheep all over the place. Then, 1,000 years later, King David was famous for beginning as a very skillful shepherd in his youth. He was not a wandering, tent-dwelling nomad like his ancestors, but King David started off as a shepherd, as a young man. And his most famous psalm is about God being his shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, when it comes to Jesus, Jesus is well known for numbers of parables and sayings about sheep and shepherds. So we're all surely aware of the importance of sheep in our understanding of the gospel. So if you walk around St. Paul's Lutheran Church, you can find many examples of art that depict Jesus as the Good Shepherd, which of course means that we're supposed to imagine ourselves as his sheep. It's one of the most popular themes in art around our church. Of course, we have a stained glass representation of Jesus as Good Shepherd right up front on the right side of the sanctuary in a place of honor. That's not just any shepherd in that stained glass window. That shepherd is Jesus. So the point of that art is that we should remind ourselves of how Jesus is our good shepherd and we are the sheep belonging to the good shepherd. Sheep who follow the guidance of the good shepherd sheep cared for by the Good Shepherd. In addition, recall that church leaders are called pastors, which really is just another word for shepherd. It's also common to call congregations flocks. So we should perhaps spend more some time thinking about how we are supposed to be like sheep. Yet, who wants to be regarded as being like a sheep? People mostly don't want to be seen as sheep because sheep are seen as 
quite dependent, passive, helpless, unintelligent creatures. Even back long ago, did people like being compared to sheep? I wonder. Sheep are mostly seen as flocking together in tight groups. So the thought of being like sheep probably doesn't naturally occur to people except as a put down. Yet we should actually embrace the thought of being sheep of the good shepherd's flock. Well, Considering that we're in America, how about going with a cattle metaphor? That might make some sense, seeing as how ranching and raising and selling cows has been so important in our nation's history. Rather than the image of a shepherd and sheep, how about the image of a cowboy and cattle? That's an interesting thought, but there are so many reasons why that just won't work. Now, you might think that we're just dealing with considerations of geography and climate and culture and economics here as we think about sheep, but the sheep metaphor goes quite deep in the Bible, as well as pointing to lots of other things as well. Doing a little research informs us that sheep are raised all over the world, not just in the Middle East. So which country in the world is most involved in sheep raising? I think you'll find this surprising. A lot of people will probably guess that Australia has the most sheep of all, but it's not Australia. Can you guess which country has the most sheep? There's a country that has close to three times as many sheep as Australia. For that matter, India is almost equal to Australia in the number of sheep. So they calculate that altogether there are about a billion and a quarter head of sheep in our world. And there's a nation they calculate has about one seventh of the total, about 180 million sheep. Can you guess which nation accounts for one-seventh of the world's total sheep? It's not where you might think. It's China. Now, this isn't just a recent thing. Years ago, as I was learning to write Chinese characters, I noticed how important sheep were in that language. As you learn the Japanese language, you also begin to learn a lot about Chinese things because the Japanese originally use Chinese characters for their writing. So as you learn to write Chinese characters, you begin to pick up on things like what certain bits of different characters indicate, like how the characters were put together. Of course, there are many parts of many characters that point to, for example, men and women and children. But there are a fair number of characters that use sheep in the characters. In fact, just a little reflection on the Chinese character for righteousness or justice causes one to think that the character for righteousness, which comes from ancient Chinese, must have come out of sheep sacrificing. The conclusion is unavoidable. 
There was a time way back in Chinese history when sheep sacrificing must have been very important. The Chinese characters lead us to the thought that there must have been a time when the Chinese sacrificed sheep in order to relate to God. It's almost as if they knew something like biblical religion, like we read about with Abraham and the nations around him. But we know practically nothing about them sacrificing sheep in ancient China. It's lost in the mists of history. But we can tell that the character for righteousness that is still used all, all, all the time in modern Chinese and Japanese, etc., points toward sheep sacrifices. Just a glance at a few ancient Chinese characters related to religion and to God causes you to think that sheep sacrifices were just as important in ancient China as in so many other places around the world, including the Middle East of Old Testament times. Isn't that surprising? It's not only places like Israel or Syria that connected getting right with God to sacrificing sheep. It looks like they had customs in ancient China, in ancient India, and all over ancient Europe and Africa that involved sacrificing sheep. Just look at the original Chinese characters. Anyway, they count China as having 180 million sheep. That compares to perhaps 6 million sheep in the USA and 60 million sheep in Australia. So that should remind us that we can't ignore how sacrificing sheep was so vital to humans coming before God and worshiping God. We shouldn't forget the story of the first Passover and how Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Anyway, we must embrace our identity as Jesus' sheep, despite the fact that people might not want to see themselves as sheep, we still should. It turns out that we have a Good Shepherd theme Sunday every year. On this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, every year, we read one of the sections of John chapter 10. In the three-year cycle of readings we follow, it's as if we've dis divided John chapter 10 up into three parts, and this year we're looking at the middle third of John 10, which is all on the theme of Jesus being the Good Shepherd. So every year on the fourth Sunday of Easter, we return to the theme of Jesus being our Good Shepherd. Thus, Jesus claimed the title Good Shepherd for himself. And we've got to think that he was recalling Psalm 23. Psalm 23 lies behind all that he says throughout John 10. By doing this, it was like saying that he is God. Since David started out, the Lord is my shepherd in that psalm. In King David's mind, God is like David's shepherd just as a human king is called the shepherd of a nation of people, 
that was an image that they used all over the world in ancient times. It's not only kings of Israel, kings over Egypt, over Mesopotamian kingdoms, over African kingdoms, were also called shepherds of those nations. It was a royal title. So Psalm 23 is about how King David claimed a special relationship with God. And by extension, all the Jewish people had a special relationship with God, much like sheep are especially close to the shepherds of their flocks. Then by calling himself the good shepherd in today's lesson, Jesus is claiming to be God and to be like the God that King David prayed to and worshiped. So when we have a funeral at St. Paul's Lutheran Church, we remind ourselves that Jesus is the good shepherd. We reaffirm that Jesus is our good shepherd. If Jesus is the good shepherd, then we're the sheep, the sheep who are able to follow the good shepherd's leading. And the good shepherd is leading us to heaven. So in this life, we have a close personal relationship with God, sort of like how a shepherd is actually close to the sheep in his care knowing them individually and personally helping them in their search for grazing places and fleeing predators, then ultimately this is all about Christ's eternal kingdom, the kingdom of heaven in which Jesus is king and in which we're taking part. So the final line of Psalm 23 grabs our attention. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. So that is about eternal life in heaven with Jesus Christ. But we should see Jesus as guiding us individually and personally all through this life on our way to heaven. We are being led to heaven by our good shepherd, King Jesus. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Jesus calls us to draw close and examine his wounded hands and feet and to know the depth of his love for us. Let us therefore approach the throne of God in confidence as we pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Awesome God, as Jesus entered the locked room to show his disciples the beginning of a new world, so enter our hearts and move us to faith in Jesus. He is risen. He is our good shepherd. Convince us of the truth and significance of the resurrection and free us from all our fears. Give us courage in the face of death, knowing that this is the gateway to new resurrected life for those who trust in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray for our walk with you as individuals and as a congregation. You are our good shepherd. Help us to always be faithful to you and to never forget what is important, to listen to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are transforming our world. We wish to be faithful servants looking after your church and carrying out your deeds. Strengthen us for your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, we remember those in need, the unemployed, the homeless, the persecuted, and all who are ill or suffering. Grant them peace and healing, for you are their refuge and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we ask for peace in your presence. Often we are agitated and distracted by suffering and troubles. Please give us your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, please look after all Christians suffering persecution for their faith. Strengthen and encourage them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, our walks with Jesus are often winding and difficult. Help us to follow our Good Shepherd and overcome all adversity while we remain faithful to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of freedom, empower our faith so that we witness to your truth truth that liberates us from sin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort those who mourn with the truth of Christ's empty tomb, that in the midst of their grief, they may abide in the hope of his resurrection. Uphold them in faith as they await the day when you will wipe every tear from all faces. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we present these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is risen from the dead and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.